Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Lives Transforming Video Training Series. Our series is based on the book Freedom by author Derek Wilder. My name is Brent Henderson. Derek, this week's topic is one I know we all struggle with, and it's around coveting. I've heard coveting described as is wanting what I don't have or, or maybe even wanting to be someone that I'm not. A couple of years ago, I was traveling with a buddy of mine, uh, Wade Nolan, over in, um, over in South Africa. We were close to the Botswana border, and we came across this, this black mamba that was in the dirt. And my buddy said, hey, Brent, grab the camera. Well, he goes over and grabs his stick, and he pins this thing down to the ground. Now, you have to understand, a black mamba is the second deadliest snake in the world. You know, they say when if you get bit by one of these things, you better just sign your traveler's checks. And so he took this thing, caught it, I filmed him on camera. And then when he was done, I said, hey, would you take my camera and take a picture of me holding this thing? And here I am with this, this nine-foot-long black mama coiled around my arm, taking this picture, and I'm doing the hero pose. And I think back about why did I do that with this you know, incredibly deadly snake? And I hate to say it, but I think the truth was, I wanted people to see me holding this deadly snake because somehow I thought that if they saw me holding this thing that they'd respect me more or that I would have more worth. Um, I was talking to a guy uh, in a coaching session. We'll call him uh, David. He grew up as the the jock. He was telling his story about how he, he could kind of get whatever girl he wanted and this sort of thing. And he ended up marrying and having a couple kids and... Uh, had a good job. It just everything was going well, and all of a sudden, his life started kind of unraveling. And David was very, I think, very upset with God. He started quoting. He knows the Bible very well, and he started quoting some scripture out of Proverbs and talking about how God, as as God's children, you know, you know, the blessings that come from God towards His children is something that He's counted on all His life. He just can't understand why God stopped blessing him. And I saw. I went a little further, and and I said, well, first of all, how how would you define blessing? And he said that it was food, shelter, clothing. You know, you read in Matthew six where God's going to take care of those things. He just couldn't understand why these blessings were not happening more and more. And I said, well, if God does that for you, how does that connect you with Him versus what's happening right now? And he says, well, that that's evidence of God's love. He said then when he provides these things for me, um, I know that he loves me. But right now, I don't even know if he loves me. We need to introduce this guy to Job. Well, that's very interesting that you mentioned that because he brought up Job a number of times. Oh, wow. So as we're talking about Job and we're talking about his particular life, and we've talked now about blessings and we've connected him to God's love, I then asked him to define love. I said, David, it sounds like that if blessings of God are evidence of God's love, then the definition of God's love would be to what? And he goes, well, I guess it would mean to bless me. And I said, so your definition of love, it sounds like, is, in fact, what would you say your definition of love would be then? And he goes, well, I guess it's giving somebody what they want. <laughs> now, I mean, you can see how easy we can get messed up. Oh, man. I mean, we live in America. Most of us do. Not everybody listening to this does. but And we listen to uh, preachers, and we listen to you know TV broadcasts from preachers that talk about that, you know, if you're a Christian, then you're going to be blessed, and blessed means blessings, and blessings means money, and money means God loves you. Well, of course, when the job goes away because of a difficult circumstance in your life, now all of a sudden we have to assume that God doesn't love us anymore. And this is where David was landing. And so I asked him one other question. I said, so what if you give someone something they want and it actually hurts them? Is that still loving them? Well, he wasn't sure how to answer that. And I said, well, let's, let's just try it out then. Let's say, for instance, that your son wants candy, but you know it's not good for him. So what do you think the loving thing to do is for your son? Give him what he wants? No, it would be to not give him the candy. Well, see, that screws up our definition of love because loving someone is giving them what they want. Uh, so we see where we're getting all convoluted here. Yeah. And so basically, his thought was an emotion and action. His action uh, was coming from an emotion of depression. He was struggling very much with depression. Now, out of that depression was a lot of 
isolation. So his action or his way of living life was totally isolated uh, from the outside world. He, he didn't want to be around anybody. He, he didn't want to get out of bed. Uh, that was kind of the action, I guess. And then his thought behind that emotion of depression was simply, if God's not blessing me, he must not love me. And if God doesn't love me, then what, what's the use? And so what we did was, after kind of aligning the thoughts and emotions and actions together, we started looking at some of these things and asking, you know, first of all, is it true that God blesses us? And is it true that if he doesn't bless us like we want him to, then he doesn't love us? But the problem is, is there's a lot of Bible verses that talk about this blessing word. So how do we reconcile that? Interestingly enough, we start going back to what does the word blessed mean? We went back to Matthew 5. Uh, for Matthew 5, verse 3, it actually says in the commentary section, the Beatitudes, blessed means happy. It describes the inner qualities of a follower of Christ. The inner qualities. The inner qualities. Yeah. See, so does God suggest he blesses us? Absolutely. Yeah. But when we get the word blessed completely defined incorrectly, now all of a sudden we're buying into a lie. See, because God does bless us. In fact, you think about Paul in prison saying, I'm content with little or much. In other words, he was blessed. He was content and happy in the most rigorous of circumstances. However, the lie is not that blessed means happy, but instead blessed means I get what I want. We believe that if we get the money or we get the woman right, or we get the guy or we get the family and we get these things outside of ourselves, then that means God's blessed us. Yeah. The irony is blessing is an internal quality. It's not an external quality. And so what God promises is this. If you have a wife, but you're connected to the source, me, you can be happy. You're blessed. But if you don't have a wife, but you're connected to the source, which is me, God's talking here, then you can be happy. You can be blessed, which is why it makes so much sense when Eugene Peterson paraphrases the verse in Matthew 5, that says you're blessed when you're at the end of your rope because you lean more on God. You're not depending on a spouse or a family or a job to cause the happiness. But when we turn around and we allow those things to cause our happiness, now this isn't about God at all. This is about these things outside of us making us happy. And this is where we get tripped up with the lies. Does it make sense that God would maybe change the course of your life to move you towards healthiness if he actually loved you? Yeah. Well, that's hard to remember sometimes, right, when you're in the middle of it. In fact, what father loves you more? A father that sees that you're engaging in unhealthiness and creates an environment where you can grow? Or one that just keeps giving you the candy, yeah. even though he knows it's going to kill you? It's like breaking our kids' legs by giving him stuff. We would never intentionally take a two-by-four and smack him across the legs. But when we don't do the things that are loving for them, knowing what's best for them, that's essentially what we're doing. In fact, Brent, what you just said was really, really cool. In, in Hebrews 12, out of the message, says, God is educating you. That's why you must never drop out. He's treating you as dear children. This trouble you're in isn't punishment. It's training. The normal experience of children. And then listen to this verse. Only irresponsible parents leave children to fend for themselves. Would you prefer an irresponsible God? We respect our own parents for training and not spoiling us. So why not embrace God's training so we can truly live? Mm. We spend a lot of our life trying to manipulate God to get what we want. <laughs> That's right. And then get mad at him when we don't get what yeah, we and want. And we're just like little kids. <laughs> right. Ugh. What beautiful truth when I realize that, yes, I want what I don't have. But this thing that I don't have, which is maybe a wife or a family or a job, if the truth is this, my meaning doesn't come from those things outside of me. My value doesn't come from those things outside of me. And blessed doesn't mean something external. It's something internal. internal. It's God in me that creates contentment. This is the truth, then, that supports the emotion. And if we're thinking that, you know how hard it is to go to depression? You know how hard it is to not want what you don't have and be depressed? See, when we don't want what we don't have, contentment is easy to lean into. It's the byproduct, yeah. Yeah. Blessing is about happiness, contentment. The irony is, is when we detach from those things that we think are blessings is the moment that we're blessed. 
What a beautiful truth that we have in knowing that God wants the best for us, that we can trust him, and the happiness is something that comes from the inside. You know, I hope you guys have been as blessed as I have in hearing the truth that God wants what is best for me and that I can trust him. I hope you'll come back again next time, and we're going to talk a little bit more about this, and this next one's going to be on the tyranny of wanting. See you next time.